Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a very dangerous event. An event that might in your lifetime happen here on planet Earth. And well, I don't want to scare you too much, but this is something you should be familiar with. So let's talk about this unusual event known as Geomagnetic Storm and welcome to What The Math. Now, originally I was going to name this video, this event might cause World War III. And today I'm going to explain to you why actually it is a very potential threat to our planet. And the thing is, let's actually first talk about what exactly are these geomagnetic storms and why are they so dangerous. You may have already heard of the so-called Carrington event that happened back in 1859 and in this video I'm not going to go into too much detail about it. You can actually check out the video from, for example, Fraser Kane who made a pretty good video explaining what occurred in 1859. But in a nutshell, it was such a powerful solar storm that even back then when we just started using a telegraph for our first attempt at long distance communication, the actual paper that was used in telegraphs was set on fire. This was an extremely powerful event that if it happened today it would most likely have a huge impact on most of the modern technology, very likely wiping almost all of the data and destroying a lot of the, if not all of the devices that we have on the planet that are for example not EMP protected or are not protected from the electromagnetic poles. So some of the military technology might survive, but most of the civilian technology will probably be completely annihilated within only a few hours. And here's the scary part. There's been a lot of recent studies that decided to focus a little bit more on trying to estimate how often such events occur, because even though the um, Carrington event happened, I guess about 150 years ago from uh, when I'm making this video, these events could have been a lot more common than we think. And so for the past few months I've been actually trying to collect a few papers on the subject and try to see what these scientists have discovered in the last year or so. Now first of all, what exactly are these events and how do they even form? And all of this of course starts on the surface of our sun. In this simulation uh, that you can find in the description below, you can kind of see how these magnetic lines form on the surface and these often actually have a tendency to then snap. In other words, once in a while these magnetic loops have a tendency to reconnect and this magnetic reconnection can then lead to a release of a tremendous amount of so-called coronal mass. Now these CME events or coronal mass ejection events are pretty common and because the sun is essentially a sphere, they can go in any direction around the solar system. But once in a while, if we're really unlucky, they will point at just the right direction at where Earth is going to be. In other words, when this CME is headed toward Earth, it can unfortunately intersect with our planet and then cause a lot of disturbance on the surface. Now interestingly, a few years ago, in 2012, a very powerful CME occurred that was headed right at our planet but missed us by just a little bit. In other words, the so-called solar storm of 2012 could have been the next Carrington event had it crossed our planet, but we got really lucky and it didn't, it missed us. And so since then, scientists have been very active at trying to establish how often these events occur and try to come up with some sort of a way of well, avoiding certain damage that will occur when they do come here. But of course the problem today is that most of the technology is completely unprepared for this. In the last decade or so, since the emergence of smartphones and a lot of other technology, of course uh, pretty much everyone has a laptop today, almost everyone has an online bank account and most of our money is not even physical anymore. Like for example if you look at China, they don't even accept cash anymore anywhere. You cannot buy anything with cash. You have to use your smartphone and use the QR code system integrated into WeChat. So pretty much entire China is dependent on the smartphone technology. And because of our over-reliance on technology in the last I would say 10 to 15 years and the lack of these very very powerful events, we sort of have been so far pretty lucky. Now here's another thing. A very very powerful event occurred back in 1989 in my home province of Quebec in Canada. I was too young to remember what exactly happened, but according to my parents it was a pretty serious event with essentially most of the um, province being completely in the dark because the geomagnetic storm completely wiped the electric grid of the whole province. And this event was so powerful that very large aurora were visible very far south even in places like Florida. 
This very powerful event also had a lot of effect on various satellites, it also affected some of the computers that were already used back then, and most importantly, or more specifically, more terrifyingly, this event also caused a very large blackout of communications across the planet. And this is actually one of the scariest parts of these geomagnetic storms. A typical CME would ionize our atmosphere so much that, well, you would not be able to have any kind of electromagnetic communication. All of the radio communication would cease to operate, and it could also lead to the failure of various cooling mechanisms inside nuclear reactors, and this is actually one of the scarier parts. So imagine, you have no communication, all of your nuclear technology is failing, these satellites are either failing or are completely unresponsive, and well, in some sense, this really looks like someone is about to start World War III. I'm pretty sure that countries like China that are not even used to seeing this would panic completely. And with a complete lack of communication and understanding of what's happening, a country might accidentally push that red button and start another war. And the effects of a typical CME don't even end there. Apparently, a typical CME would also affect our ozone layer, decreasing it quite dramatically. It would also significantly increase the amount of various types of radiation in the upper atmosphere, sort of turning flying or being in space into a very, very dangerous endeavor. So if you are in an airplane, if it doesn't crash obviously, you might experience a tremendous amount of radiation you would not experience otherwise. And because in the last decade so much of the technology is essentially interdependent with telecommunication and with space technology, there are a lot more satellites today, um, a lot, a lot more different launches happening pretty much every single year. We have companies like SpaceX and Electron and the new Astra company, all of which are going to be launching even more satellites. All of this is a kind of, I guess, in a sense, bubble. Bubble that's forming that could be completely wiped overnight by a CME that nobody is prepared for. As a matter of fact, having looked around the house, I have not found anything that I have, except for obviously things that are not um, electromagnetic in their nature, that would survive a typical CME. The computer that I use, the smartphone, and very likely all of my bank accounts would most likely not operate for at least a few days, possibly weeks, and possibly be completely wiped entirely. Which in a sense is kind of scary, but also makes me think, why am I not actually ready for this, even though I technically know that it's a very dangerous event that is going to happen. But my hope lies in the idea that one day we will realize that it's going to happen and start making things a little bit more EMP proof. But let's actually talk about the frequency of these events and also how likely they are to happen in your lifetime. And spoiler alert, it's going to happen and possibly a lot sooner than you think. So some of the recent studies, including one of the most comprehensive ones in the last few months, decided to investigate the frequency of potential CMEs and find out the average frequency for an extremely powerful storm. Actually, they decided to investigate less powerful storms as well, but we really are only interested in these very powerful Carrington-like events. Now, to find all of these results, they, they found a perfect opportunity to study these. The Royal Observatory in Greenwich in England, that's been active for a very, very long time and has data of up to about 150 years, and another famous and active observatory in Melbourne, Australia, that also has a lot of data available. Both of these observatories have been collecting magnetic data for at least 150 years. But the most important thing about these two observatories is their location is actually antipodal. And what this means is that they are almost exactly on the opposite sides of the Earth. And by being on two opposite sides, it allows us to study the magnetic effects in a lot more detail and essentially create a very interesting and very accurate magnetic index of our planet. They refer to this as the AA index. And by using this index, the scientists behind this paper identified several events in the last 150 years when the magnetic emissions coming from our sun were a lot higher than they were otherwise. In other words, other potential Carrington-like events. And unfortunately, what they discover is that we can expect a great event to happen at least once every 25 years. Although a Carrington-like event would only happen every 150 years or so. And such a great event would be only a little bit weaker than a typical Carrington-like event, suggesting that we might still have a few years in reserve before such an event occurs. But here's the thing though, even a great event would be enough to destroy and severely disrupt modern communication simply because in the last few years we've been really ignoring the fact that our sun can be occasionally extremely active. 
As a matter of fact, here you can see in the last decade or so, our sun basically spoiled us. The magnetic emissions and various solar emissions were so low that we almost forgot that it can even happen. And remember, smartphones kind of appeared somewhere around here, so none of the smartphones are obviously ready for this. And judging by their predictions, a great event might definitely occur in the next 10 to 15 years, which is kind of troubling. And other similar studies kind of confirmed the results as well. There was another paper from Japan that discovered a somewhat similar finding, including identifying several events that we kind of ignored simply because the technology just didn't exist yet, but there were several major events back in 1921, for example, and even in 1872, all of which were comparable to Carrington event as well. And interestingly, some of the scientists even started discovering these reports of solar storms from various archaeological evidence and um, by looking at the written records by several advanced civilizations that lived in the past. For example, the Assyrian civilization kept a very detailed analysis of everything, including the night skies, and they've had several observations of these very powerful electromagnetic storms that resulted in the aurora, which could only be explained as another CME event. In other words, human civilization has always experienced these events. But back then, it wasn't really a big deal. Now, it's a much bigger deal. A lot of our modern civilization depends on the technology that can be completely wiped by a typical EMP, electromagnetic pulse. And so this is something that we definitely need to take seriously. But more specifically, more studies of our sun are needed and we need to start thinking about how to protect our technology from a potential coronal mass ejection that could come our way and disrupt our life once and for all. Now today we have several studies that do focus on trying to analyze sun and predict some of these emissions, but we're still not there yet. We need to have more satellites observing the sun and more studies trying to understand how these CMEs work. Luckily, the Parker Solar Probe that's slowly coming closer and closer to the Sun is going to provide a tremendous amount of data that will help us with this. But remember, these events happen really quickly. So by the time that it occurs, it's going to give us almost no time to prepare and to protect our technology. So we need to be ready in advance. This of course includes creating technology that is somehow ready for these events. It also includes uh, trying to create satellites that will not fail if a CME occurs. And most importantly, the modern banks need to have a lot of backup systems in order for all of us not to suddenly become bankrupt overnight. But it's also very important to just be aware that these events happen if suddenly you find yourself in a complete blackout and not being able to communicate with anyone. So make sure to spread the message and help people learn that CMEs and events like Carrington event do happen a lot more frequently than we initially thought. And having read several different studies on this topic, pretty much most of the scientists unanimously agree that these events will definitely occur in our lifetime. Possibly 10 years, maybe 15, but maybe even sooner. So I'm sure that if, as long as we're all aware and we're ready, we'll be okay. But unfortunately, countries like China that over rely on technology and have everything stored in the major central database are possibly going to be in for quite a surprise. On the bright side, maybe this will actually open up China to the rest of the world. But instead of speculating, let's focus on the facts. I left all of the papers on this topic in the description below. You can check out all of the data as well. And I'll make sure to follow this up with another video in the future, specifically focusing on prevention and protection. So make sure to subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, possibly consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. Until, of course, the CME wipes my account completely empty. But until that happens, I'm pretty happy with any support you can give. Anyway, on that note, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye-bye.